have you gotten any placements specifically from the channel you would say like people finding you from that channel and then discovering your music behind that i would say all of them <laughs> almost all of my places have happened because of that because we got that mouth <laughs> What's good, everybody? So this week, we are talking with the homie Prod by Infinite. This is somebody who has been making a killing on social media and has used his social media platform to actually land him some pretty major placements. As always, if you want to learn more about selling beats online, we have a free masterclass in the description below. And then after that masterclass, I'll tell you right now, we are going to pitch you on our course called the Constant Conversion Strategy. And not only will you learn about marketing and selling beats online, but you're going to get access to all the interviews, including this one that we have done on the Heat channel, the full interviews. So enjoy the interview peace out ladies and gentlemen he may or may not be a familiar face but this man has put some numbers on the board infinite go for it my name is infinite i'll go by pride by infinite i have i want to say around a hundred thousand on tiktok i think i got like fourteen thousand subscribers on youtube and maybe like 10k on instagram so that's kind of like the rough ranges for all the social medias and everything like that and then also on top of that just through putting out the content creation and everything like that. I've also been able to get placements with people like Tinashe, Mozzie, Sada Baby, One Take J, Guab Dad 4000, uh, Tweed, Capolo, Suede, Lil Bean, Mac J, Zay Bang, people like that. We'll, we'll, we'll pick up here, then we'll like go back to the beginning. So do you have a certain, so for people who don't know, you're also a content creator. Okay, so now we're getting like more like formal interview here. Let's get it. So you're also, you're not a, you're not just a producer. You're also a content creator. So yeah. a question that I get asked a lot is like hashtags. Do you have any, did you do like any research when you first started? Like how many hashtags do you use on TikTok or Instagram? Is there any real strategy that you have? Cause I mean, we, like I said, we don't have one. No, I don't have one either. It's all superstition. Um, I've been using the same set of hashtags for like the past like two years because it because like two years ago it worked really well on one post and mm -hmm. then I'm like this is that's it in the time. that's you know it I mean? it's, like, it's like my good luck <laughs> hashtags that's really all it is but it I've had videos flop with it too so it really doesn't mean anything all right all right well now with that spicy question out of the way we'll go back to the beginning here so on YouTube your first upload was August 2020 I did stalk. I'm pretty sure it was August 2020. <laughs> now, when that first upload, it didn't look like somebody's first upload on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I mean, maybe we were just, you were just good out the bat like that. I mean, I guess it, it was kind of like face cam tutorial, but when did you start actually producing or have an interest in music? Um, I would say 2016 2017 right. somewhere around there i really got into reducing because like i saw a uh, rhythm <clears throat> excuse me i saw a rhythm roulette video and for some reason like the idea like the concept of being a producer was just never present in my mind you mm -hmm. know i mean i didn't even know like i never thought producing was a thing you know what i mean but then i saw the rhythm roulette video and i was like oh this is really cool so i took my uh my college money you know what mm. I mean like the whole check that they give you to like buy your books and everything like that <laughs> i bought like a laptop and i bought like a little midi keyboard <laughs> then i just got to work and i was like hey let me just try this out that's kind of how everything that's started fun. so then all right so did you do did you release any music as just like trying to sell beats online before the tutorials at all oh yeah absolutely uh because the tutorials and stuff like that were only maybe like a year ago you know mm -hmm. I mean? i've been for like four or five years yeah at that point so uh the thing is about me is that i've tried everything under the sun you know what i mean i tried doing interviews i tried doing podcasts i tried doing like informational videos i tried selling beats like i tried doing all this stuff and um i just stuck with the one that ended up working <laughs> you know I mean? which was like the more tutorial videos and everything like that um, I even had like a, maybe for like a year, I did like a, a reaction kind of thing on my Instagram, which was doing really well, but I just ended up stopped doing it because like, I didn't like it anymore. Mm -hmm. And then I just found out I enjoyed doing like this type of producer related content, like way, way more. Interesting. Okay. So then I'm going to ask this question too. It's my new question. I'm going to ask everybody, would you consider yourself entrepreneurial? Absolutely. 
Interesting. So Absolutely. I don't want to shit on people right now, but everybody <laughs> who I've talked to that has been more successful than most people, like, let's be realistic. Are you in the top 1% of people? No, because everyone's going to be like, well, he's not like that successful. He's more successful than probably most people. Okay. You know, a little humble brag there. And same thing with Dilly. Like, Dilly was like, I'm an entrepreneur first, music producer second. And then I I asked on Instagram, Instagram polls, I was like, do people consider yourself like entrepreneurial? And people were like, that's corny. No. And I was like, interesting. I was like, there's a big shift here that I'm noticing with like the people who are seeing more success consider themselves that. And they are weird tangent. Didn't mean to shit on anybody. But I think it's it's an interesting thing to look into that people who are seeing success adopt that um, personality, mindset, belief system that they are an entrepreneur. So now, I guess, anything to say about that? That's super interesting. Uh, <laughs> it's just like that little correlation. But it makes sense, though, because a lot of the growth that happens within social media and in the music industry is the because of like the business aspect of it. You know what I mean? Like I yeah. made a post co- like a couple days ago where it's like the music business is really like 70% business, 30% music. That's how I look at it at least. Um, and when you really focus down on that, you can see why people grow. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like for instance with me, I took a lot of uh, strategies that other people were doing within their own businesses and kind of converted it in a musical way. So like, you're, I uh, know, go, go ahead, go, yeah, go ahead. But like, for instance, like I saw uh, a lot of streamers, like video game streamers and everything like that. What they'll do is that they'll stream on Twitch and then they'll they'll stream for like two hours or something like that. Mm -hmm. Then they'll take that stream, they'll consolidate it into like an eight minute video. And then they'll take that eight minute video and they'll consolidate it into like one minute, like TikTok clips. Mm -hmm. So I was like, how can I do that? You feel me? And I just take that business idea, that business model put it into music, you know what I mean? And then it ended up working for me and I got like my biggest TikTok, which was like six, seven six. million, something yeah. like that. Somewhere, so, somewhere around there. It's a light six milli. Who's <laughs> 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 <Just> counting? <right? laughs> yeah, but that, that's that's what it is. Like, it, like that's and that's like what business people do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They take things that are working for other people. You know what I mean? And that's what entrepreneurs do. Like. They take business ideas that are happening for other people, they bring it into their own world, and then they make it work for themselves. Couldn't agree more, man. So now, let's... All right, here's a question I'd, I'd ask you then. So, like, let's say you have a 16-year-old cousin, or, like, yourself. Like, you go back, like, timeline, you jump back to yourself at, like, 16, or whatever it is you start producing. Like, what advice that... You, like, everything you know now. Like, you've got to collab with Busy Works Beats, which is super fucking awesome. That dude's a legend. You know, you've got plugging companies to sponsor you for giveaways. I think for 10K, you had a massive list of plugging companies sponsor stuff. What advice, if someone said, you know, I want to, you know, be a music producer for my career, like, what advice would you be like, listen up? This is what you need to know. Okay. I would just give more like general advice. Um, one is just like be patient and just like hold it down. You know what I mean? Because everybody's time doesn't necessarily work the same as yours. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There, I've seen a whole bunch of people blow up within a year, within two years. For me to get to where I'm at right now, it took four to five years. So it's like be patient and just realize that not everybody is on the same timeline. And then also one that I think is very, very underrated is to adapt and overcome no matter what you're doing always try to improve something that you're doing you know what i mean never get like complacent mm-hmm. so <clears throat> like for instance like what i said earlier like i've tried everything under the sun you know what i mean so i would definitely go back and tell myself like hey just always just focus on getting better you know what i mean you do something for like three four months it doesn't really work okay maybe try something new introduce something else just always try to like experiment so you can find something that works for you Beautifully said, man. I'd agree 100%. So I think, obviously, you're a content creator, as we, we've, we've established in this. How important do you think, like, do you really think just uploading type beats on YouTube is going to be 
kind of something that can like keep you i don't know what the word is but like do you think like type beats will die out because of how important content creation is becoming and building a brand and kind of what possibilities there are when you have a brand um so i don't think it will ever die out because people use it as like a search method you mm -hmm. know what i mean so whenever rappers try to like look up beats or they need a specific beat that is like the only way that they have in their head to be like okay i need this like because we also kind of forget there's a lot of times where people are like at parties if they're just chilling with their friends and they need to look up like freestyle type beat little baby type beat or mm -hmm. whatever you know what i mean so i think type beats are not going to go anywhere you know what i mean because of just how cemented they are in like just like the culture regular culture you yeah put. Uh, so there's that, but I will say I can see it being less valuable to the producers. You know what I mean? Because yes, like these artists are going to be like searching it up and everything like that, but I feel like people get more connected with the brand and that can be much more valuable to them. Mm -hmm. And like, especially with like new producers coming in and just doing the same thing and everything like that. When these people are looking up beats, they're just like, it's whoever's the biggest or just <laughs> on some random stuff you know what I mean yeah. like you picked out of the lottery system for me to even listen to the beat so mm -hmm. like i feel like the value for producers is definitely dwindling um but i don't think it's going to go anywhere you know what i mean i think it's always going to be present in the culture 100 percent. so now with establishing a brand you're so like you you're wearing your hat right now of pay creators they're worth which is your merch that you're, you're dropping this is something that always kind of like cracks me up is when producers who just make type beats like drop merch. And I think it's really interesting, maybe like how I would compare it is like when you're dropping merch, it's like you already have a brand of people who are there because of you. Like, yes, the topics of like West Coast is what you cover, but like the people who become your fans are like, they're watching for you as well because of how you're talking in the videos, your personality, like, do you think I guess how important of a role do you think that plays in like actually having your face out there and being the brand yourself? Oh, it's super important because it sets you apart so much more. And this is one of the things I tell people a lot when they're concerned about like making content and putting their self in front of the camera because they're like, nobody's gonna watch me, no one's gonna care, none of that, you know what I mean? It's like, have you ever made a friend before? <laughs> I mean, if you're entertaining enough for someone to be like, hey, I'm going to leave my house and go get food with you and stuff like that. That means you're entertaining enough to watch a 30 second clip of mm. online, sit in front of you. You feel me? Like mm. if, if, if you are cool enough to the point where someone will get out of their house, they will drive and go over to your house just to sit there and watch Netflix, you can make a video that is entertaining enough for someone to watch for 30 seconds. Because a six hour commitment to go hang out with you is way more difficult to do <laughs> than to like than than to like me be like oh, okay yeah yeah that's cool <laughs> so it's like mm. it's it I, I, I would say the branding stuff is really really important because it's what sets you apart and that's like usually my response when it comes to like oh who's gonna care who's gonna watch or anything like that yeah so i guess the next question i would be because i really want to hammer at the importance of the brand here and, and what you're building is it looks from the outside looking in, I could be completely wrong, but so like the usual topic or the thought I should say, is like when I make all this producer content, I'm just going to attract producers, which I mean, it probably say like most of your audience is producers, but I feel like because also what you're doing is everyone says pick a niche and usually people do, but like, you're like a living embodiment of the niche. <laughs> like everything you do is West coast, like to the core in that sense like you're really like about the niche you're working with people in the niche not only from online but it looks like in person too like you've done some stuff with people and so i guess not only did it help you get these you got placements as well i guess i should say that too yeah. you have a list of placements do you think have you gotten any placements specifically from the channel you would say like people finding you from that channel and then discovering your music behind that I would say all of them <laughs> almost all of my places have happened because of that because um I was posting like my loop kits to my because okay let me put it like this 90% of all my placements are because of my loops 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then with my loops, I'm placing them on my platform. So that's usually how they get like discovered and everything like that. And then people use them, they get placed, so on and so forth. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like that's how they usually come to be with like the placements and everything like that. Yeah. So you're getting all your placements from collabs though, with people finding your loop kits, then getting credit off the collabs. Yeah. But that that how that's how it ties in with like the platform and everything like that. Cause mm-hmm. they find my platform, they find out the things that I have like uh off, like offering that are available to them and then it kind of just happens from there yeah all right so now we're gonna like i think the model that everybody's so used to is i upload beats to youtube i sell beats which works like it, it works it's there it's whatnot but i think as when you're building a brand as a producer making content with tutorials right then it's usually like oh like here's a loop kit here's a drum kit and so I guess I want to talk about like what other opportunities are you trying to take to monetize your audience? I know you have a Patreon. Um, I mean, obviously getting, having the platform itself, you can, you know, companies will reach out to you for collab deals and whatnot that can make you money. So like, what are ways that you're monetizing the brand of who you are? Yeah, I would say Patreon is definitely number one um, because it kind of ties into like how branding is important to other people and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Because when you're branding yourself, like people kind of like, for lack of a better term, kind of like fall in love with you. You feel me? Like they, they fall, they fall in love with like the personality and then like the music comes and it's just all added value. Mm -hmm. It means when that happens, you get a kind of a communal sense. You know what I mean? So with Patreon, it's kind of like a similar thing. Like people like know Patreon as like a, community based like i'm supporting this guy kind of thing yeah so me introducing that into my fan base and everything like that definitely helped me out uh because it was that like communal thing but then i also added like a whole bunch of value on top of it yeah to like sure that it would be successful for me so patreon is one that i definitely recommend for a lot of producers to do because I also have like a weekly loop service you feel me so it's like i'll drop seven loops per week and then all the MIDI to the loops and then all the project files to the loop for like a monthly fee and everything like that. It'll mm-hmm. be like 28 loops a month or something like that. And <clears throat> doing that and being able to monetize that has helped me a lot. And that's that, and that's something that I feel like a lot of producers aren't really doing. I've seen a lot of producers just be like, hey, give me $20 and I'll put you on the list forever. And I'm yeah. like, you're, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot right now, dog. Like. Mm-hmm. People are willing to pay per month. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, especially like when you're within a niche like me, like West Coast loops, stuff like that. It's not really that easy to find. You yeah. Know, you, can't, you can't really go on Splice and then look up West Coast loops and get something that's relevant to the culture. But you can sign up for a similar price to my Patreon, which is my my Splice, mm-hmm. you know? and then um, get things that you actually need for your production. And everything true so i guess here's a question i have just because there's no right or wrong answer to this but like i think a lot of people people have asked me like yo like what's the best niche to make money for selling beats it's like probably not trap beats because that's that's where everybody is right now and you you just made a valid point you know you got into the west coast market where like i said splice really doesn't have anything for it there's probably i don't watch that much youtube with it so i don't know but there's probably like a handful of top creators um who do that so you basically solidified yourself like as the source for that product so i guess what would you say is almost there's a lot of people who might love trap and i'm not trying to like scare anybody away from it but like do you think it almost be better to try and find a niche of production that has a lot less competition to try and start doing stuff like that for or do you think you should be like no like if if traps your full-on passion you'll find a way to make that work Mm, that's a good question. I because I I definitely feel conflicted by that because you should always go passion first with everything, mm-hmm. but at the same time, you might have to compromise a little bit. You know what I mean just so you can make your goals happen. You know what I mean so maybe you kind of go into the trap niche mm-hmm. and then find things that are a little bit more scarce. Yeah, like so almost like, like a sub niche of within trap exactly that's what i would suggest because like i feel like the compromise is definitely like the move you know what i mean because mm-hmm. if you just go like i'm really passionate about juice world beats you know what i mean so i'm gonna make 
boom, just a million views for type of it's like that's like one of the most oversaturated niches within hip hop like the hip hop genre yeah. as a whole. You know? So like it's not gonna work out that well for you, but you know what I mean? But the thing is too, at the same time, there's always exceptions to every single rule. So like it could happen, but I just feel like the chances of something really good happening is like really low for that. So just definitely just try to find a niche within that trap genre mm-hmm. that you can like mess with and like definitely like compromise. 